What's up everybody, I'm bringing you a story from Looper today. Why that new Hulk character introduced in the She-Hulk finale is actually a big deal. And there's a reason I wanted to talk to you guys about this story today because I just watched the season finale of She-Hulk and I'm not surprised by how it turned out. I'm not surprised at the jabs they took at both the fans of Marvel, the fans of it, the MCU, the fans of good storytelling and they jabbed at themselves, I guess, to make themselves seem self-aware, but it just comes off cringy and awful. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even surprised that it was bad. So I'm not even mad that they did this. In fact, it's really hilarious that they did this because it just shows what kind of uh, people are running Marvel right now. And it will show further on as we continue reading this together. So. Contains spoilers for She-Hulk Season 1, Episode 9. Whose show is this? Season 1 of She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, featured a lot of appearances from other Marvel characters from the Hulk, Mark Ruffalo, to Wong, Benedict Wong, to Daredevil, Charlie Cox. Despite Jen's fourth wall-breaking assurance in Episode 3, The People vs. Emil Blonsky, that I want to make sure you don't think this is one of those cameo-every-week type of shows, She-Hulk became exactly that. That hasn't been something that fans have been complaining about, though, as many tuned into She-Hulk specifically to catch Daredevil and not the show because the rest of it was actually terrible, whose appearance was teased in an early trailer for the show. Entire threads on the r slash Marvel Studios subreddit were dedicated to discussing when Daredevil would finally show up, including one thread starting by, uh, started by this user, where fans speculated about which episode Daredevil would appear in. In an interview with the show's creator, Jessica Gao for Marvel.com, she talked about how thrilled she was to be allowed to use a character like Daredevil. It just made so much sense that he would be on this show because both he and Jen are lawyers by day, superheroes outside of the office, even though Jen is doing it reluctantly, so we needed someone far more popular and entertaining to boost our show's ratings up because boy were they doozies. Gao explained, what better character to kind of show how this struggle she's having is possible? It's just such a struggle. She doesn't get everything she wants. She doesn't break the fourth wall and talk to Kevin, who's a robot, and forces Kevin to give her the ending she wants. But while Daredevil may have been the focus of many fans' attention, I mean like many fans' attention, the character casually introduced at the end of season one finale might be an even bigger deal, and I'm sure that you can see him right here. Scar, uh, Hulk's son. And um, it's not looking too good. Plus, everything that you're seeing right here, this this screenshot is basically the duration. It's like it may be two to three, four seconds. You see him just kind of like walk up and then just kind of look at his dad and then look at everyone else. And then they're all just like, Bruce, after he introduces him as Scar, they're like Bruce, instead of just saying Scar, we're the family. Yeah, and it's, it's weird how the whole episode is tailored after some kind of weird um, Fast and Furious movie thing. I don't understand why. <laughs> but they, they changed the entire ending. I'm not sure if it was on purpose. You know, to me, it, it would. I'm sure that a lot of people are going to say, well, it looks like they had this ending on the back burner just in case their real plot didn't pan up or it was or they got too much backlash or something. That's what it feels like to me. But they could have done this on purpose just to bait people because they just love getting Marvel fans mad these days, I guess. And the, some of the reactions that we're getting are, are really hilarious, which we'll actually go into in a second. I'm excited about that. But first, we have to talk about Scar because this is a big deal, not um, in terms of excitement, but a big deal in terms of failure. At the end of the season one finale, Bruce Banner shows up at a family barbecue to introduce his son, Scar. The, the character was introduced only briefly and didn't have any lines. <laughs> See, like really briefly, like two seconds, you're just like, hey, wait, was that another Hulk? Because I had to pause and rewind and watch it again for a second. But it still opens the door for this character to enter the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. And that's all you have to do these days. You just show a future character for two seconds. They don't even have to say anything. And all of a sudden you have entire articles dedicated to like, is there going to be a World War Hulk movie after we saw this character for two seconds? Whoa. In the comics, Scar was canonically introduced in World War Hulk number five as part of the plot line where Hulk was banished to the planet of Sakaar. Hulk conceived Scar with Kyra, the, I think, I hope that's how you pronounce it, the old strong, and the child matured very quickly, becoming a fully grown adult in just a few days. In addition to having his father's powers, Scar also has his mother's abilities, known as old powers, which include being able to control and manipulate the Earth itself. 
It's notable that Hulk has already spent time on Sakaar in the MCU after Thor found him there where he had been spending years in Hulk form fighting in tournaments held by the Grandmaster. Not much is explained in the brief scene introducing Scar, so it's unclear if Bruce returned to the planet or if Scar was born elsewhere. So I, I actually heard that Scar aged really quickly in the comics, and that's why he's looking so adult here, or at least like late teenage years, but he's all like hulked out. I'm also like really disappointed by how like out of shape Bruce is. They just seem to have just like shrunk him like over and over throughout the years, like little bit by little bit until he just looks like this semi-fit Hulk. Even his son looks a little bit more buff than he does now. Fans on Reddit were already excited about the opportunities that Scar's introduction makes possible. I just hope we'll know more about what happened to Bruce on Sakaar in another series or movie. I, I just feel like so much time has not passed, so him having a son isn't going to make sense. I don't know. Translating that to audiences will be a little tough, considering their current track record of terrible writing, but I'm sure they'll try. Not referring to CGI just doesn't look like Scar, and it doesn't look like Scar. It looks like a hulked up space teen and not the warrior. If Marvel decides to redesign the character for future appearances, it would hardly be the first time that's happened. But misgivings aside, it's likely that Scar will appear again in the near future. And let's let's go to some of those comments because they are just hilarious. It says, here's one from uh, Meg. Even Matt looks confused and the brother can't even see. Marvel did Scar dirty with that hairline. Yeah, the hair looks kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't know what's so impressive about it. Uh, <laughs> does that look like Scar to you? Looks like Scar, right? He's just all like, Wah. this guy's just like, Ugh. this is most likely Scar's barber, by the way. I think that is awesome. Yep, he definitely did. If I see anyone call Scar a young Avenger, they're getting a beat down. <laughs> Read a, an effing comic. <laughs> oh my goodness. Scar, my bud, what have they done to you? Yep. Shrek forever after. <laughs> it's awesome. Is that that? Uh, oh, that's the actor, the face behind Scar, Will Dusner, recently from the Star Girl TV series, and they picked him up for this one. Yep, they definitely gave him CGI muscles and everything. Oh my goodness, I don't, I, I don't. I, well, some people are happy about it, but no, uh, uh, I don't care. Scar slander in the MCU is crazy. You are simply bad product. <laughs> people are just so funny on Twitter sometimes. They really can be. It really can be. And that's saying a lot, because Twitter is usually just... Ugh. Yeah, I, I, I think that She-Hulk is just canceled, personally. I don't see why the series is going to continue. It seems like they just, like, changed the entire ending. They went all the way up to, like, the writer's room, literally, to change the ending of the show. And it's probably due to the backlash. Of course, they make jabs at, um... They make jabs at the Marvel fans while they're... While they're showing us this whole new finale slash ending thing for her. And it just shows like a, a fast and furious type ending with like Matt Murdock being all like, oh, hey, your family is so nice. And they're just like, oh, do you make money being a lawyer? He's like, not really, but people do need help. And then she hulks like mom. And then Bruce shows up and he's like, hey, everybody, here's my son. And, and then everyone's like, oh, no one cares about your son. But Bruce, oh, it's so nice to see you. And it's just a, such a disaster scene. And. The ending that the ending that surrounds that one scene also doesn't make sense uh, equally, but it's just absurd. And I, I honestly can't wait to see some of the reviews that people are making. And I might make a review. I watched each one in in a, in a binge, and then watched the newest one, and I was just incredibly bored. And then I just laughed at the end because I'm just like, wow, they're so desperate to just anger people, and they're slashing out because they see their their money dwindling and they see their popularity dwindling. It is what it is. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Like and share this video. Subscribe. Click that notification bell. And I will see you all next time.